The, um, <clears throat> the interview meeting with Todd uh, Eldridge on CIMT got rave technical reviews, but it really didn't get that many views, and it was obvious why. It was just, it was too dang long. Uh, it was over an hour, and unless you're really into details on something like that, it's hard to gather and uh, dedicate a full hour on something like CIMT. So what I did was take um, a l excerpts on key topics, um, and this topic is um, looking at plaques versus overall arterial age. Uh, there's, those are two totally different ways of, of interpreting CIMT. The plaques themselves are like peaks and valleys, and the overall arterial age is the amount of overall LDL that's been deposited there. Um, <clears throat> So again, which way is the, the right way to do it? The short answer is both, but we're going to talk about that, and Todd's going to explain a little bit more detail. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is talk mean max first, if that's okay. Um, okay. Because... Um, While you're picking it up, I'll give go. my version and then you can correct my errors. So one of the other things about uh, Todd's reports, and I could show them, if you, and you can show it if you've got my most recent report from April. Um, Todd routinely reports both mean max and uh, common IMT. Now, he'll explain what those means, uh, what's, what those mean. But the issue is this, a lot, of, a lot of companies, even CIMT companies, just report arterial age and tell you whether or not you've got, um, whether they see what's called a, a discrete plaque. Well, if you look at the, the literature, the science, the science would indicate that there are two different things and both independently have a significant impact on predicting your risk for heart attack and stroke. So, Todd, you want to take it from there and clean up the mess I just created? <laughs> no, I don't think it's a mess at all. Let me, uh, I've actually got some images that I think I can bring up that will add clarity to that. Let me just, uh, yeah, here we go. So, so um, let me just uh, take a second to bring those images up for you, if that's all right. And, uh, And, and if you'll, if you'll kind of talk, I'm showing is a piece of our report and this has been, we've, we've taken the patient name and a lot of the, you know, so that we were HIPAA compliant. But um, so you'll see that there's several, there's actually five areas on our report that are coded green light, yellow light, or red light. Green meaning good, obviously. Yellow meaning uh, let's be cautious and red meaning you probably need some treatment. And this is gross oversimplification, uh, Dr. Brewer. I would never, I would always defer to a physician to treat. But as grossly oversimplified conceptually, we 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 would take people that are in the yellow and probably try to manage that with lifestyle changes, and people that are red may may be candidates for pharmaceuticals. And that's uh, for anybody listening, please. That is a gross, gross, gross oversimplification. Uh, so please don't take that and act on it. Uh, the um, I will say as a doc, it's not as much of an oversimplification as you're saying, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so th there, there, there are, there's average mean and average max region. And the way to think about the difference between these two, the average mean is uh, what we're doing is taking about 600 measurements and averaging them together. Now, that may not mean too much to you, but uh, think about a mountain range where there's peaks and valleys, right? And, and an average measures both the peaks and the valleys and averages them together. That's what the average mean is. So we're, we're looking at everything up and down, the, 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 the apex of the peak and, the, and the, the lowest part of the valley. We're measuring all of that together and we come up with an average mean. So that's the way to think about that. It, it, it's inclusive of peaks and valleys. The average CCA max region, by contrast, what it does in the same views, so three angles on the right, three angles on the left, what we're doing is taking the six thickest IMTs. So we're just measuring in a mountain range where there's lots of peaks, we take the, the tallest peak and measure it 
and and we say and then we take all so so the tallest peak in this image then the tallest peak from this image and then the tallest peak from this image and we average all of those together so it's the average of the peaks if you will right now uh, a year or two ago amy and brad published data with in conjunction with johns hopkins using our our data and what they found is that there's actually information the delta between these two data points when you atherosclerosis is a very rough disease that undulates, and so the more the the further the delta or the spread between the max region and the average mean, the more atherosclerotic, the more likely they were to have atherosclerosis. And and by contrast, when we're healing a patient, the the smaller that delta, the 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 less difference there is between those two. Uh, the more likely they are, you are to have a healed patient. So it was evidence of, of efficacy of treatment, if you will. So those two data points are not unimportant. And uh, uh, just while I'm talking about the report, it's important to understand that only three of the values on our report have alert values. And the reason for that is the alert values are those values that have uh, that are tied in the literature to a uh, a hazard risk ratio or a an inflated risk, right? So if right. if the value that is shown if, if there's a, a particular number that would indicate that a patient has increased lifetime risk, then we show that in the alert value. If we put a value and it does not have an alert value, it doesn't mean it's unimportant, uh, but, you know, like the arterial age, people love that number. That's great. But we would never want a physician to treat to the arterial age because that's, that's just a coefficient. There's no, there's no alert value there. And, and quite frankly, what a coefficient means for those that, that may not be familiar with that, it's just another way to say a number. So what we've done is taken the, the average mean IMT and we've plotted it on a map that, that measures epidemiologically where you should be for your age and gender. And we say, oh, well, this, this thickness looks more like somebody who's 70 than somebody who's 60. Or this looks like somebody that's more closer to a 30-year-old instead of a 50-year-old. Uh, and so it's a, but it's a coefficient. We must be careful when using coefficients uh, is for treatment. I, I always recommend keeping our eyes focused on, on those two metrics right there. And so then, Todd, could I interrupt and just yeah. uh, maybe try to put it in um, my third grade or sixth grade uh, <laughs> perception that uh, common IMT is more like just the, the average, where uh, the average of all of them, Whereas uh, mean max is the average of the of the peaks. It's the you take the biggest yep. plaques and say uh, you average those out. Yep. And both of those numbers, when you look at the science, both of them, those are very important. But again, when you go to a lot, of, uh, you, you go to a lot of IMT providers, they don't really give you that. So Correct. again, that's one of the reasons that I came to you. Anything uh, to add to that topic? No, uh, well, if we talk about literature and literature searches, this is important as well because some of the protocols only take a single caliper measurement. And so their entire study is based on one caliper, one, one measurement as yeah. opposed to measuring 600 measurements. And you can appreciate that one caliper measurement is not going to be as accurate or reproducible as taking 600. And, and so we, we have to always focus on, and, and, and the, the, I would say the vast majority of the early studies took three measurements on each side. So it was more akin to the what, what we post as our max region. So it's important that we understand how the measurements were taking, taken uh, in order to understand better uh, what the true risk is. 